All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of JNL Garage. It has been a while since we have posted. I am back in the shop today working on JP's uh, Dodge Dakota. He's at work. He's been traveling back and forth. He's he's busy all the time, and he needs me to work on it. So we're going to be putting rotors, pads, and an oil change on this today. The reason why I have not been filming is because Reba has been down and out for going on about two and a half weeks now. And it's really, for uh, an Alabama country boy, it is very hurtful to him to not have his truck sitting at the house all the time. So I really just haven't had the motivation to film because of it. But I'm back out here working on JP's Dakota uh, while he's at work. So I figured might as well get the camera out and film a little bit. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so first things first. This is going to be another kind of a DIY. I know we've already done one on Reba, but I did a really crappy job on it, so I'm going to try and redo it. So first things first, I have done nothing, but I've taken the wheel off itself. Most of the time, when brakes go out on a car, they start getting weak on a car, it's going to be your front brakes, especially on the newer vehicles. They're the ones carrying all the load, and most of the time, the dealers turn all the braking power towards the front anyways. So first things first, take that front tire off, and now we have to break the back side of the caliper off, which is going to be two bolts on the back side right here. And on a 05 Dakota, they're going to be half inches. And so we're fixing to go ahead and take that caliper off. Do not undo your brake line unless you plan on putting brake fluid back in it. I do not recommend breaking loose your brake line. It's just a way to save money. Uh, I'm going to show you the process that you have to do if you decide not to break loose the brake line and you don't uh, buy some brake fluid. But always, 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 if, or the way I do it always, is don't break your brake line loose. And I also forgot a step. Safety first. Make sure whenever you jack the front of the truck up, break the lug nuts for, loose first before you jack it up, then jack the front of the truck or car up. Be sure to place your jack stands. And uh, let's get this brake caliper off. All right, so now that uh, you have gotten the brake caliper off, you want to take it and put it in a secure spot where there's no stress on the, uh, on the brake line itself. So that way you're not risking tearing that brake line and having to buy a new one. So now that you've done that, I'm having to replace rotors and brake pads. If brake pads is all you're looking to replace, then this is as far as you have to go. Uh, then you'll, on the Dakota, it has slots here with little pins that slide onto the uh, little tabs on the brake pads, and it literally just pops into place. And then uh, what I always do is I take a pair of C-clamps, I take one of my old brake pads, and I take the brake caliper and compress the pistons back in so you can slide it over those new thick pads. Now, uh... The one thing that um, that I needed to get to, that I needed to tell you guys on how to do this, is whenever you're squeezing this side of the brake caliper, if you already have your brake fluid box full, or brake fluid reservoir, sorry I'm getting tongue tied, already have it full, then whenever you squeeze that, it's going to push whatever fluid is in there holding that caliper out up into the reservoir itself. Now, once it does that, then you want to make sure there's at least about an inch or so, maybe three quarters of an inch of a gap in your brake fluid reservoir from the top of the fluid to, to the top of the reservoir. But if you do not have that gap in the top, then what you're going to risk doing is spraying brake fluid everywhere on the inside of your engine bay. And brake fluid is real bad on paint, and sometimes it has a tendency to spray out from under the hood and get on your paint, and it'll actually peel the paint right off only where the brake fluid's been. And it looks real bad. So you want to try and contain that as much as possible. So once you do that, if you do have the gap and you press it and it pushes that fluid up into the, into the reservoir and you have no problems, Put this side back together once you have the brake pads and the brake caliper back on, back mounted onto the rotor. Then 
you want to go back into the truck or the car, your vehicle, and you want to pump the brakes. You want to pump that caliper back. You want to pump fluid back into the caliper so that it's pressed back out. That's going to put your gap back in your reservoir. So whenever you do the other side the exact same way, you're not going to spray brake fluid everywhere. So if you go ahead and pump this side after you mount it and you still have this side over here mounted, that way you don't risk blowing brake fluid everywhere and you don't risk blowing up your, uh, messing up your paint job. So that's what I'm doing right now is I am taking off the caliper mount so that way I can slide the rotor off, put the new rotors on, and uh, I'll get back to you guys in just one second. All right, so now I have taken the caliper bracket off. Uh, it's it, on the 05 Dakota. It was just uh, two 13 16 bolts. Uh, I did have to get out the impact gun to get it off. Usually I try to just use ratchets and stuff. Uh, so that way I don't over torque anything, which usually that only applies whenever you're tightening stuff. But I still just like to use the ratchets myself. And once you get the uh, caliper bracket off, uh, the rotor literally, you just give it a good shake and it'll rock right off. Uh, off the studs and off the hub itself. And then you want to get out your new rotor, which is over here in the back seat. And... One thing I almost always do to rotors whenever I'm putting them on my vehicles or someone else's, these rotors come with a thin uh, film. of It's almost like a grease on there, and they just put that on there to keep the rotor from rusting. Uh, it's no big deal. If you don't want to do this part, uh, it's simple. I mean, you just use your brakes. It'll burn it off. It's not going to hurt anything to leave it on there, but I always take some starting fluid, and that starting fluid will usually cut it straight off of there. And so that's what I'm going to use is some starting fluid or some brake cleaner to take this film off. So uh, that way you don't have to burn it off, and it also tends to stink a little bit. So I'm going to blow that off and then literally all you do is back step your processes uh, from taking it off slide the new rotor on put the brake caliper mount back on compress the brake caliper pistons and then slide your new brake pads on slide your caliper on bolt it and put your wheel and tire on and your brakes are ready to go hope you guys enjoyed this video stay tuned for some more jno garage action some more diy videos and uh be sure to leave a, a like. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe. Uh, we are usually trying to post videos very regularly now. If you guys got some DIY videos you'd like to see, that you'd like to have explained, comment, let us know. I'm sure there's tons of videos already out there, but if there's a certain part that is getting you every time, be sure to let us know. We will try our hardest to help you guys out with it. And uh, thanks for tuning back in with JNL Garage. And as always, we'll catch you next time.